Welcome to another episode of Baby Bounce Back, where I show you a video compilation of my 27th week of training after having my fourth child. There he is, seven months old, moving and cruising. The day he started crawling, he crawled over to a steady surface and stood up. As a mother of four, I don't have a lot of time to myself. When I do finally decide to take a minute to lay down, see how long it takes him to find me. You will not believe how many times I've had to restart my box breathing exercise. Not the video portion of it, but just the exercise. Because when I lay down, it's like they sense it. Quick! She's off her feet! Get her! There you go. Did you find your ball? Is that your ball? I do my best to make myself available to them. I am their stay-at-home parent. Finding the time to take care of myself like this wasn't an easy thing for me to learn how to do. Even now, I wake up every night to feed my infant, and then I wake up at 6 and start the day with a whole morning of homeschooling. Luckily, there's so many of us because this little guy keeps us all on our toes. I'm lucky I have a lot of little hands to help me. And then I do my workout in the afternoon while my children get to utilize their precious screen time. Sometimes he'll go watch screens with his siblings, but he doesn't really care for that. As you've seen in this playlist, he usually hangs out with me. Over this last month, we've been teaching him the meaning of the word no. He was reaching for a few glass jars, and so I sat on the floor. I held onto his little leg and said no every time he tried to reach for them. No, 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 no. Don't touch. It was a very gentle process. He didn't even get mad at me. When he stopped reaching for the glass jars, I let him go. And you see the result. That five minutes that I took to be persistent and consistent with him, he learned it. That time investment now pays off big. Good job, Mama. <laughs> that was a growl. I didn't know you could or should train your babies at this age. With my first child, I don't think she heard the word no till she was four and a half. And then we had a couple years of behavioral adjustments that we had to make. For the whole lot of us, her and me. Do yourself a favor and don't wait until they're five, because that was my mistake with my first child. As we're moving into my tiger walks, this is my crossover symmetry system, and I am moving through a series of exercises called the Strength Protocol. I started having thoracic issues when I started homeschooling. I thought that it was attributed to my spinal fracture, but it was actually my poor posture at the school table. I'm sorry to say. I am very excited to have my crossover symmetry system as part of my assignment this week, and I am looking forward to see what it does for my thoracic spine. I am into my third week of being a very good kid when it comes to limiting my sugar intake. I'm not sugarless. I haven't gone sugarless, but I have drastically cut back in the amount of sugary treats that I have consumed in the last three weeks. I still have some fat rolls, but they're no longer droopy fat rolls, and that is some serious progress. I am very pleased with how quickly it is dissolving. With my power clean practice this week, I added 10 pounds every time I switched to set. And I'm only showing you two clips, a couple reps at a low weight with my empty bar here, and a clip at a high weight, 85 pounds. I don't think I'm doing it right. I'm close. I'm doing the best that I can, but I feel like there's something off here that I can't place. Honestly, I think it's the landing. Look at that. I'm on my toes and it's loading my knees, which is not good. That's not what you want. So this is an example of something you should not do because you'll end up hurting yourself over a long period of time. This is also an example of why trainers are so important. I would not know that if it wasn't for my trainer. So if you're trying to do this by yourself, you have to be hyper vigilant about the technique so you don't end up hurting yourself over the long run. The goal is to increase our capabilities, not our injuries. Mm -hmm. 
Turbo the Turtle makes me laugh every time. I might need to turn that into a short just so I can watch it over and over again. We begin Friday with our bucks breathing, and I must say that this is nearing the end of my third week of drastically reducing my sugar intake, like I said before. And what I mean by drastically reducing my sugar intake means that I'm doing my best. I still use honey on my morning oatmeal. So I can't say I've gone completely sugarless, but I've switched out having a piece of fruit after dinner instead of cookies. I put applesauce on my pancakes instead of syrup. If I eat bread, I make it, I don't buy it, and I don't eat dessert every day. What I have noticed from my attempts to cut back is that regular food is more filling when you're not overloading your taste buds with sweets all the time. I've come to realize that if I am munchy all the time, then I'm not nourishing my body correctly. That constant munchiness isn't hunger that I'm feeling, it's my sugar craving. And my belly fat didn't start shrinking until I started saying no to my sugar addiction. I realized that I needed to heal some of my emotional traumas before I was willing to say no to my sugar addiction. My sugar addiction was a comfort, it's a comfort food issue. So I had to find alternative means of comforting myself. And for me, that means taking proper care of myself. Movement, attitude, nutrition, and sleep. Those are the four aspects of my well-being that when I take care of those four aspects, I am in a better position to say no to sweets. I'm going to do my stretches. <laughs> That might be exactly why I got into such dire straits during this pregnancy anyway. By the end of 2019, I had finally been diagnosed with my spinal fracture, and I decided by the January of 2020, I was going to have a baby that year. And then by the beginning of March, I'd also decided to pull my son out of school and homeschool him because he was not learning to read in the system. And I don't blame the system for that. He has just shown that he isn't successful in a classroom environment. He requires a bit more one-on-one -on -one instruction. A classroom of 20, he gets lost in the crowd. I imagine he could be successful in a classroom of five students, but those ratios aren't available in my area and I'm perfectly willing to teach him. So by the end of March, 2020, I had already decided to bring my kids home to homeschool them. So COVID didn't really change my life much, except that it allowed my husband to be home with me during the, the middle the trimester of the pregnancy. I was able to have an extra set of hands, which honestly was an adjustment at first, but once we got accustomed to it, it was a tremendous blessing. We tried to make the first two weeks of quarantine as fun as possible. In the second two weeks, I started realizing we needed to pass out some assignments because with everybody home, everyone was making that much more of a mess around the house. I usually tidied up while everyone was gone, and since no one was gone anymore, I, we had to develop the habit of tidying up together. Even so, my perfectionism made homeschooling one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do because I wanted to do it, and I wanted to do it well, and I wanted to be the best teacher I could for my children. Between homeschooling and preparing for our new addition to our family and my spinal fracture crushing the, the living daylights out of my central nervous system, that is the extent of my difficulties over the course of 2020. Movement, I'm, I couldn't move as much because of my, my spinal fracture. I tried to keep up with my fitness, but eventually I did have to stop. My attitude, I did my best with my attitude, but you know, even then you never know. I, you have your fears and doubts. My nutrition, I started using sugar as a comfort food because of all the other things that were going on. It was my stress eating and sleep. I, with the pregnancy, I lost all kinds of sleep near the end, especially. All that happened because I put myself into a position where I knew all of those elements were going to get thrown out of whack. I knew that um, getting pregnant again was going to be difficult on my spinal fracture. I wanted to document for you how I picked all the pieces up afterwards. Maybe by watching me take my baby steps, you'll be able to take some baby steps of your own. This is my wish for you today, that whatever condition you find yourself in at this moment, that you'll be able to take your next best step toward better health and well-being. Remember, keep moving.